We all love to be a little nosy, right? In today's video, I'm going to reveal how much my first Google Play Store app made in its first four months, as well as reveal some tips I've learned along the way. So the things I'm going to cover are what the game even is, what ad solution I went with, my monetization strategy, like how many ads I had and how I tried to get people to watch those ads, how many downloads the app actually had in total, how much each ad unit that I had made in the four months. And I'm going to cover some of the stuff that went wrong and things I'd change if I was to do this again to try and maximize the amount of money that I could make from my app. Well, you may have heard of this little game called Wordle. It was the viral take on the lingo format. And I set myself a little challenge over the Christmas break. I just wanted to see whether I could make a kind of Wordle clone uh, within a short space of time. And I kind of covered that in a dev vlog here. And I did, I called it Wordily, which is like word and daily smashed up together. Not word willy, as my fiance calls it. And then after the devlog came out, I tidied it up a little bit and submitted it to the Google Play Store because I wanted to go through that process of actually releasing something on the Play Store, just in case I wanted to cover it in future videos like tutorials, etc. And I didn't actually think I'd make any money on it. And if it did, it wouldn't be a lot because I wasn't going to advertise it or shout about it or kind of, you know, put the game out there. I was just going to upload it. And also my monetization strategy in the game was very reserved. So let's talk about that. So the game initially launched with just one banner ad kind of at the bottom of the home screen. Uh, and this was using Unity's built in uh, ad system, which you can access through the Unity editor and kind of install that and plug that service in. And for the sort of week, two weeks that the game was live with Unity ads in place, I earned zero pounds. Ads just weren't getting served. There was no inventory for the ads apparently. And I've kind of looked around and it seems to be quite a bad problem with the Unity ad service. Like no one's paying for, buy like no one's buying Unity ads. So seeing that, um, I thought, well, this isn't clearly working. I'd have expected to even earn like a pound or something. So I swapped over to Google AdMob. So once this change was done, I actually slowly started seeing money kind of trickle in and then added a second ad, which was a rewarded video ad. Uh, players could watch an ad and as a reward for watching that video ad, they would be given a score streak, which meant that if they failed guessing that day's word or any other words, their streak would be protected. So and it was just those two ads. That's all I had in the game. There was no like in-app purchases. There was no ads like every other kind of like game it was literally just a banner ad at the bottom of the screen and then i later on after the game had started to earn a bit of money i added a second ad and i added that second uh, rewarded video ad so how much did those two ads actually make me okay so let me reveal some of those juicy stats you've all been waiting after this quick sponsored message as you know, games development isn't all about programming. Once you're done prototyping and you actually want to start building your game, you're going to need somewhere for your players to run around. And that's where Game Dev TV's new environment art course comes in. If you want to make beautiful environments which are suitable for animations, games, or just a stunning portfolio piece, this course is for you. You don't need any experience. This is going to be a ground up course using Blender 3.1. It's project based, so you're going to apply your new skills immediately to real 3D models. And it will teach you how to model a range of environment assets building up to the image that you can see in the video here. Grant, the course leader, is going to cover modeling, sculpting, texturing, lighting, rendering, and many more core aspects needed for an environment artist. The course is out now in early access, and if you use the link in the description, you'll be able to take 90% off the course cost. And with that said, let's get back to the video. So first up, how many downloads did my game have? And I've got it kind of here, so I'm going to be looking at my screen, not at you beautiful subscribers, and you are subscribed, right? Um, so first up, how many downloads did my app have? So, so far, I've had 3.36k downloads and 1.42k uninstalled so people have like deleted it from their phones and um, so that has left a total of 1,988 active installs as of uh, the 24th of April 2022. So I've got about 2,000 people that have actually like left it installed on their phone. From the home screen banner, which is, again, it doesn't go into the game with them. It literally is just on the bottom when they're choosing the game mode. It doesn't follow them through. I've earned a whopping, and I don't mean this kind of sarcastically, $864.00. And again, in four months, that's pretty good. And this was from 359,492 ad requests. So my code has requested to display an ad uh, 360,000 times. And out of those 360,000 um, ad requests, 6,399 clicks have been um, detected. 
So that's kind of what you're getting paid for. Uh, they pay a little bit more when people actually click. So that's $864. The Streak Protect Rewarded video is done dreadfully. Uh, like I said, I added that on later in. I kind of patched that in. That has earned $10 in the three months that it's been live. But that's had 112,510 requests, but it's only had three clicks. Um, so yeah, that that's $10 um, for the rewarded video ad. And I added that in thinking that they'd be worth more because the what... You know, you're making a user watch the full 30 seconds ad. But yeah, so in total, in the four months that the game has been live, I've earned from the game and the ads alone, there's two ads, $864, which is around £672. Now I'll give you the stats, just w w stick around. I'm going to tell you kind of some of the mistakes that I made and kind of some of that I change uh, to possibly earn more in the future. And as a bonus, if you make it all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to reveal how much of the YouTube devlog that I showed at the beginning of the video uh, made on YouTube. Just as a little bonus tidbit if you watch all the way to the end. So the first major issue I had was in the first few days, I had a lot of bad reviews. But you get ratings and reviews on the App Store. Ratings of people who've just, you know, one to five stars and reviews of people who've actually written something alongside their rating. And I wasn't checking the store because as I said, I, I genuinely, wasn't thinking that it was going to make any money. I just wanted to go through the process from the start to the finish of releasing a game on the App Store. So I kind of knew all the ins and outs. So if I want to do it again in the future, I've learned from it and I, I know how that process actually works and like what the submission process is like and everything. And the bad reviews were mainly down to the fact that the, uh, the dictionary that I'd managed to get was about a thousand words. So it was picking words from this list and then as is in the game, you make the guess and then it'll tell you whether your guess is correct and then show you um, the letters that were correct if they're in the word. Got some gunk in my eye. So the big complaint people had was the game was working fine, that was great. But when people were putting in their guesses, it wasn't in the dictionary. So people were just frustratingly putting in words, which were genuine legitimate words, but they just weren't in the 1000 words that uh, that were in the list that I had got. And then one day I was like, oh yeah, I published Wordly on the App Store. Like I should probably check just to see if anyone's downloaded it. And then I saw that people had, and there was a lot of bad reviews on there. So I immediately got to work patching the game up to kind of fix that. So the first thing I did was I added a 10,000 word strong dictionary, which kind of alleviated all of those concerns. I then replied to the reviews kind of when I was in the process of submitting the patch, just saying, hey, it's coming. And then eventually I was like, oh, hey, you know, I've updated the dictionary. If you could like refactor your review. And some people did. They changed it from a one star to a five star. So that was great. And then from that point on, subsequent reviews and ratings were slightly more positive. Now the app is sat at about 3.3 stars as opposed to five. And it doesn't look obviously as good when you're in the listing of other games of that type and it's not complete by a long way the dictionary probably still needs updating uh, i'm less inclined to update it now because uh, at the height of this wordle craze i was getting about 40 dollars a day now it's settled to about three to seven dollars a day i'm pretty sure that's my fiance making sure she's watching and clicking all of the ads because i tell her to so if i was to have a do-over i would definitely have a proper launch plan i'd you know market that the game was coming out try and build up a bit of buzz you know do general just game marketing but because it was this kind of clone of a viral game I didn't want to like it felt uncomfortable to be shouting out about it even though it wasn't predatory there was no like crazy monetization strategies in it instead it was just the one kind of ad and then I added in a second one which is you got a reward for watching anyway and then I would have kept an eye on the page checked for reviews and bugs and then I would have kind of patched them a lot quicker it kind of sat there for about half a month maybe a month before I kind of cottoned on to what was going on so yeah I'd check it a lot more frequently uh, it'd be a lot more quicker and responsive in patching up any issues that the people were mentioning in their reviews. And as promised, if you've made it this far, I'm going to reveal how much the devlog made on YouTube. Wait for it. £4.40, which if we convert that back to dollars and add it to the original total generated from all avenues, the app has made 869 nice dollars and it's earning now about three to five dollars a day uh, going forward. Um, so we're still waiting to kind of see, you know, at the end of this month, how much the total for this month would be. Yeah, there we have it. There's the stats. If you like this video and want to see a follow-up of how much I've made from Game Dev YouTube, make sure to hit the like button and let me know if you do below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, just to let you know, all of this information was not free. The cost is one subscribe, so you can hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'd just like to take a minute to thank my amazing patrons. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have Sector Sweep. And you can see all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members on screen now. Thanks a lot for your support.